best and worst umpire. <sighs> Hello there, and welcome back to the Trevor May Baseball Channel. Recently, I started a new thing on Instagram that I didn't even know really existed or that I had the opportunity to make called a broadcast channel. Baseball is alive. Join it. But as one of my inaugural questions in the channel, I wanted to know what the people in only that channel wanted to know from me. Now, I did one of these videos like a month or two ago, and I got a lot of requests for doing another one because there were so many questions. I was like, why not just kick this new channel off with my baseball friends by answering their questions? And boy, do they have questions. Just make sure that you are subscribed to the channel by clicking the button down there. Now questions. Best minor league teammate. A teammate of mine who I came up with and I spent like my first formative years as a professional player with and became my roommate is a six foot eight Dutch player named Mike Bolsenbroek. Bolsenbroek. I can't, I can't roll my R's very well. Mike is the man. When I met Kate, my wife, we were just dating and we went on a trip one off season out to Amsterdam and he met us there and gave us a tour. And he's just, he was just a big goofy dude that matched my personality. And I, I, I loved every minute we played together. A big shout out to Mike. Best part of being a professional baseball player. Money. The money. <laughs> obviously, the money's great. Yeah. Getting the opportunity to make life-changing money is, is wonderful, obviously. But, you know, once you get some money from it, it becomes a little bit more normal for you. The best part is the opportunity to connect with people and fulfill a dream. Like, when you're a kid, you think about being the guy and going out and just being the star and being on a major league baseball field is what that feeling is. And that is the coolest thing there is on the planet. Eight players, yourself included. Give me the best poker table of X teammates. I don't know if I'm gonna get eight and I don't know if I'm gonna be on it. So let me give you as many as I can. This is my short list for an awesome poker table. Okay, fine, I'll just put me in there. You convinced me. Myself, Tony Kemp, Tori Hunter, Blake Parker, AJ Ochter, Shay Langoliers, Seth Brown. How many was that? I think I was only like seven. Best thing you did for your mental health during the season, breathing. Now that seems weird because we're all breathing all the time. But I think the best thing I learned, especially this was last year too, mostly when I really, really bought into it. And it was your ability to control your breath allowed you to calm your body down, which allowed your brain to calm down. This was just in terms of anxiety management through the season. I devoted myself to it. I, I, was, I was doing breath work, you know, up to 30 minutes a day, every single day. Also, I found that standing, sitting in front of a camera or throwing a GoPro up on my drive to the field and just like talking my journal out, I didn't, I wasn't gonna read it again. I wasn't gonna watch it again. I probably cringe at it, but just getting things out like that, video journaling became a huge part of my routine and continues to be. What city did you most look forward to visiting? And what city did you, what city did you most look forward to visiting and look least? Oh my God. What city did you most look forward to? And what city did you least look forward to visiting? This one's easy. I most look forward to either Boston or maybe LA. Those were two fun ones. I have lots of friends in both places. At least Cleveland. Cle Cleveland. Like, you can only go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame so many times. You're getting better, I think. Best and worst umpire. My favorite umpires were actually two dudes who came up with me through the minor leagues. Nick Lentz, behind the plate. I think historically I have my best outings for a home plate umpire with Nick. And then honorable mention to my boy, Ben May. No relation, though every single time I saw him, especially this past season, we always got to go back and forth to banter about uh, whether or not either one of us was gonna be at Thanksgiving and uh, maybe we'll see each other at the next family reunion. Now the worst umpire, the ones that historically aren't the greatest are the same ones that I've noticed aren't the greatest. You know, Angel, CB, Joe West towards the end. For me specifically, Ramon De Jesus. It sure as hell felt like I was working against both the batter and the umpire sometimes. Did any of your Fortnite buddy buddies ever watch a game?
Yep. Do I feel fulfilled in my career? There's nothing really could, that could make me feel like it wasn't fulfilled. I think that just getting there is fulfillment and everything else was extra after that. And I, I learned just so much about my life, about myself as a person. And I got to like experience crazy stuff. I got to make, you know, life-changing money. I got to play a game for a living. I got to compete against the best players in the world. I got to be one of the best players in the world. Yeah, that's fulfillment. Does the league, MLB, not the team, do anything special for the players? You could make a case. I think for most people, they would feel like a lot of these things are special, like the facilities and the food and the, the access to things and the free use of the MLB app and all that kind of stuff. Those are all cool things. Those are all perks. But most of them are negotiated by the, by the Players Association and the CBA. So I refuse to give the powers that be credit for doing things that they actually didn't propose <laughs> in the first place. But in terms of gifts, yes. We do get some things from the MLB. The last two years have been gift years. Now, there were no gifts before that. You come into the, the clubhouse one day, there's a box on your chair, and there's a letter that says, from the commissioner's office, from Rob, that says, hey, thank you so much for your service. And here's the thing, right? Uh, the first year, it was a box about this big that you opened, and then there was a box about this big inside of it. <laughs> And it was uh, the in the ear beats by Dre like sport version. The next year we got some Yeti cups. They did have a cool Bluetooth speaker on top. So did you ever face Aaron Judge? Favorite Fortnite moment. Let me show you. For a big 17. Oh, oh, oh. My bad. What was your favorite memory as a New York Met? Edwin Diaz coming in on Timmy Trumpet Night was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. That was so cool. I love that they did it. Love that. I'll always remember that. But as a player, one of my favorite moments is probably finishing off uh, the 20 strikeout game that Jake DeGrom started. So I got to be in it. I got to get the game ball and I got to sign a ball that go, went into the Hall of Fame. The little kid version of me is like, what, you got a ball in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, that was that was one of the cooler ones. Favorite moment from high school ball. Almost threw three straight no hitters, but I won't go with that. I just wanted to throw that in there. But it was probably throwing a complete game in my state semifinal game. 13 strikeouts and in seven innings got us to the state championship game. Unfortunately, we got boat raced in that game. It's just something cool I always look back at. Favorite restaurant on the road in general. There's people that are gonna get really like, what? They're gonna be like, what? But because I'm from the Northwest, we do not have raisin canes. I love raisin canes. I love fried chicken. Fried chicken sandwiches is probably my favorite food and raisin canes the cane sauce man huh have you ever been fined by the league or a team if so why i've never been fined from a team I'm, i pride myself in being a rule follower but i was almost fined by the league one time for an alleged potentially hit batter ever put a tarpaulin on the field uh-oh and that Bad absolutely blood. was, oh, well, that absolutely was. I hit Jose Breu. He was really unhappy. Tension had already flared with the game. And yeah, I almost got, got fined. But after a conversation, we cleared it up and it didn't end up happening. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Who is the hardest hitter you faced in your career? The guy who gave me fits more than almost anybody was Didi Gregorius. Look at these stats. I can't get the guy out. Not only that, he kept hitting homers off me when I was catching other people's runs. So like everyone else didn't want me to face him either. So for whatever reason, just could not get a ball past, past Didi. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. What was your hardest pitch to learn? That's a very interesting question. I think my curveball early in my life was. And then later the splitter was really hard to learn. I picked it up pretty quickly pretty quickly but getting it f refined was was hard and it ended up hurting me so let's just say that one took the cake which hitter do you th wish you could have faced past or present let me give you two past players one i 
would have loved to just face Barry Bonds once. Not in a big spot. That's when you don't want to face Barry Bonds. But like, you know, in a spot where you can afford to give up a homer and you can go right after him. I would love to have had that battle and just like really, 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 really went after him. And then two, one of my idols, Ichiro. Missed him when he was in Marlins towards the end of his career, but I, I decided to pitch really poorly and not get to him in the lineup. I grew up watching him, man. He's one of the greatest hitters in the history of baseball, and I just wish that I would have gotten the opportunity to give up that, that laser single up the middle to him. How do you get over blowing a game mentally and letting the team down? Hoof. Blowing games was really devastating for me. I could not function really. It took me a really long time just to get to where I can go home and kind of just forget about it for a while. But I always, I immediately wanted to go into distraction mode because it was like really, really emotionally just taxing on me. When something bad happened, but I felt good, I want to get back out there. If I'm feeling like not super healthy or not like don't have a lot of energy or whatever, and that was why I struggled, I'm like, I really hope that I get this day so that like, it can be out of the psyche of everyone that was watching it. I'm always like, I just want people to forget that that happened. I hated that, but towards the end, I just stopped giving it any credence at all and just stopped worrying about it at all. It took a lot of effort, kind of worked, but I never really solved it. There is no right way. It, 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 some guys can handle it and brush it off and they don't care as much. And other guys, it's life and death. And I was one of those guys. How well is keeping a good diet enforced? So many random diets in the MLB. The thing about Major League Baseball is that you need to know is most of our meals are provided. You get your lunch, you get your like dinner, and then you get your post game. So you get three of your four meals for the day. So very rarely were you unable to find something healthy to eat. So once you kind of rely on that, you know, the offerings were always pretty quality and they got better and better and better as time went on. So like it was kind of just easy to do. It all comes down to convenience at the end of the day. We don't have to like football players have to maintain body mass. Football players have to maintain muscle in a different way. We have to maintain energy, elasticity and recovery. So everything was based around like, how can we get inflammation out? How can we have the energy when we need it at the time? Because it's a slow burn of a game. Like we, everyone was doing bursts of energy, but didn't know when that would be. So you had to like get good at that. So it's a lot of snacking. And so that's kind of the way we operate. So we didn't have to think about it too much. How hard is the travel and constant hustle of the regular season? It's just, it's the grindiest grind of your life. The grind is so slow and, and plodding that you don't even realize you're in it. Every day you wake up and you're just like a little bit st st creakier and stiffer. It's hard in, in, in this like discipline, like staying on it, staying competing every single day way. You're a baseball player every minute of every single day in season. Basketball, you know, they're traveling a lot, whatever. Football too, but like they go back to their city every week and they get like a day where they don't go to the stadium every week. That is huge. Separating yourself from your career is probably the hardest in baseball, in my opinion. Anything that you wish you did differently aside from the on the field results. I wish I would have really leaned into learning Spanish and Japanese when I had teammates that spoke it fluently. Like I know teammates that have done that in the past and I think that was a real miss on my part. So drop the ball on that. Most genuinely nice to fans teammate that impressed you. There's a lot of these. Joe Maurer is just the best person ever pete alonzo brandon nimmo is the man francisco lindor is just so awesome to fans who is the most impactful coach that you worked with in pro ball i would say as a manager one guy who taught me how to do the things right is the current third base coach for the philadelphia phillies dusty wathen he went with me for like two or three years in the minors at the beginning so i i was kind of learning how to get through things and he does he did such a good job of like setting setting an example. And then pitching wise, Jeremy Hefner. I had him with the Twins and I had him with the Mets. He was a big reason I went there. He's a brilliant baseball mind and I love talking about pitching with him and that made me a better pitcher, full stop. You're called in your first MLB game ever. Walk us through that moment. But walking out onto the Coliseum because I started against the A's. If you haven't seen that video of me rewatching that outing, go do it. It was great. I remember numb. I remember being numb, feeling for some seams and not feeling any. But I do distinctly remember walking out like kind of jogging out, hopping over the line like we always do. I approached the mound and as I hit the dirt, I located the ball, grabbed the ball, looked up, started rubbing it down and just took in where I was, filed it away. 
in here. Best advice I ever got. I never forget it. It's still like it was yesterday. Which team did you play for where you felt the biggest rivalry? Oh my God, Mets Braves 2022. Oh, I loved it. It was so fun. Honestly, 2021 was too. We really wanted to beat them, but you know, obviously we weren't competing the same way. Beating them consistently in 22 until that last series was just like, it just felt like finally, you know, finally it's us. It just was two teams that were really well put together, that really liked each other, that liked playing with each other, that were that like had each other's backs and would just get up for those games. That I loved it. That's the sweet spot for me because it's like, it's fun. It's fun when both sides are having fun. And we both were having a lot of fun that year. What was it like transitioning from a starter to a reliever? It was really easy for me. I was blown away how easy it was because I realized, I've talked a lot about the anxiety stuff. The way I got anxiety was always like, it get more and more intense as I approached the outing. So as the game went on, I was able to kind of relax for the first five innings and then figure out what was gonna happen. I could just like do it all at once. And for some reason, I could turn on the switch and get all this energy, felt very natural. And so I thought I picked, picked up relieving really, really well. I loved it. I, I loved every minute of being a reliever. I really, really did. It was stressful. It was stressful pitching every day, but it also was so much fun. What was your favorite jersey that you wore in your career? The 2018 Players Week jersey when we played the A's. Why is it always the A's? They were like the V-necks. They had the powder blue with the red riding. They were so comfortable and they fit so well. They were pretty much the, the polar opposites of this year's spring training jerseys. Love those things. Bring them back. I promise, MLB, you'll make lots of money. What was your highest high and lowest low of your career? Lowest low. Maybe being told that I needed Tommy John surgery. Yeah, that day was pretty devastating. So that sucked. And then the high would be probably coming back from Tommy John. Being told I'm getting Tommy John 2017. And then coming back in 2018 and closing the last game of the season, which is Joe Maurer's last game of his career, was probably the best night and day situation. When did you realize that you had what it took to play in the MLB? Getting drafted, just like having scouts tell you, hey, we're going to draft you. You're like, whoa, like that means that they think it's a possibility. And if they think it's a possibility because they have all the experience, then maybe I do. And then I just took it one step at a time. My dad used to always say that to me. Hey, hey, do you want to play at the next level? I'm like, yeah, he said, all right, let's see, let's see what happens. And he just kept saying that. I took that with me. How and when did you realize that it was time to retire? Last winter, I had a negotiation with a team and I got crazy anxious about it. I really wanted to play here at home. I'm not gonna play unless I play here. And then I realized like, I don't want to go into an off season and then just like not knowing that I'm gonna retire and then just retire. I wanted to like know when my last game was and finish in a way that I was proud of. So that's when I decided that one more year was was probably all I had in me. And then obviously within about a week of spring training, I'm like, this is 100% it. Which mascots do you think you take in a fight? All of them, except for the fanatic. He's got something sharp under there. I know he does. I ain't messing with that. Look at us, a lot of questions this time. I have some more too. This might become a second video. Thank you for your time. Those were amazing questions. Somehow none of those were repeats from the first video, which is mind boggling. And yeah, blueberry scone in the comments. I love blueberry scones. So does Mark Kotze, fun fact. Make sure that you subscribe, like, tell me in the comments how you feel about it. Tell me in the comments how you don't feel about it. Tell me in the comments what I just said the baked good was. Any of those things are good. I appreciate you being here, and I'm going to see you next time on the Trevor May Baseball Channel. Bye.